When identifying three keys to a Washington Commanders victory this weekend over the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, the number one key is protecting Jaden Daniels. But in order to do that, the Commanders will also have to achieve three things within that one key. That and more coming up on today's episode of Locked on Commanders. You are Locked on Commanders, your daily podcast on the Washington Commanders. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, welcome in, everybody, to today's episode of Locked On Commanders, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, David Harrison, credential member of the media covering the Washington Commanders for Sports Illustrated's CommanderGameDay.com, and I'm here with you every Monday through Friday. Sometimes on Saturday, we will have a bonus Saturday episode this week, so make sure you come back for that. But thank you for coming through for today's episode. And of course, the everydayers out there, thank you for coming through for every episode. Locked on Commanders is your daily podcast covering the Washington Commanders. And if you haven't already, you can subscribe for free on YouTube or wherever you are listening to this episode where we are going to discuss Byron Pringle being released just two days before the Washington Commanders open up the season in Tampa, Florida. Byron Pringle's hometown, by the way, brutal. Uh, and we're also going to discuss Two left tackles for the Washington Commanders on the field on Sunday. Not a problem. I will tell you why. I think it's not going to be a problem for the Bucs, even though there's a lot of people having uh, some misgivings about that idea. And we're going to start it all off with our three keys to a Washington Commanders victory. My game prediction for the weekend. And I'm going to tell you why protecting Jaden Daniels has to be number one. But it is a three-pronged job indeed and if you want to get even more out of locked on commanders all you got to do is sign up to become an insider today go to join subtext.com slash locked on commanders from there you can text me your comments your questions your thoughts on just about anything and you're going to receive texts on the washington commanders live text from practices press conferences games bonus content like links to our zoom our insider only zooms which we will be having one on saturday from tampa florida it's a lot of fun all the stuff going on there so head over to join subtext.com slash locked on commanders Try it out for free for the first two weeks. Decide if you like it, and if you do, stick around. This episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. Go to PrizePicks.com slash LockedOnNFL. Use the promo code, all lowercase, LockedOnNFL to win $50 instantly when you play $5. Protecting Jaden Daniels is priority number one for the Washington Commanders to try to win this game. Protecting Jaden Daniels is priority number one for the Washington Commanders all season long because – even if you think the Washington Commanders can rip off 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 wins, even if you think the Washington Commanders have to, can make the playoffs, can win the NFC East, can contend for a Super Bowl, I don't care how high or low your projection is for the Washington Commanders. If you project six wins this season, you need Jaden Daniels healthy to help carry you into the future and the next iteration of players and draft picks that, that Adam Peters is going to bring into the roster. If you think the Washington Commanders are going to be great this year, you need Jaden Daniels healthy to make sure that that happens because I can tell you right now with Marcus Mariota, Jeff Driscoll, love both those guys. No offense to them. This team is not going to make the kind of noise that some are hoping or thinking they will with Jane Daniels with those quarterbacks. So protecting Jane Daniels has to be priority. Number one, even over winning, to be quite honest with you, even over winning. Like if it's, if it's put Jane Daniels risk or health at risk for this franchise in order to try to get a win, you need to protect Jaden Daniels. I'm not telling you to tank, of course, and saying, oh, I'll just take a knee instead of running the ball. Okay, don't let, let's not get crazy here. But just trying to emphasize how important protecting Jaden Daniels is. But here's the thing. It's not a one-person job. And you could say, well, no, duh, the offensive line is more than one person. But it's not even a one-unit job. It is going to take the offensive line. It's going to take the coaches. And it is going to take Jaden Daniels himself. So starting with the offensive line. That's the no-duh one. They've got to block for him. They've got to protect him. The, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers defense is incredibly talented and incredibly aggressive. Vita Vea might be the best no, nose tackle in the National Football League today. Once led the Buccaneers in sacks, which is great thing for Vita Vea. Not so great for the Buccaneers overall because you never want your defense tackles leading your team in sacks. Kalijah Kansi, who actually just popped up on the injury report on Friday. We'll talk about that here in just a minute. He's supremely talented, very quick off the line of scrimmage very nimble type of defensive lineman who can certainly cause his own problems. Yaya Diaby was a surprise for the Buccaneers last year, looking to build on that campaign this year was a little bit banged up during training camp. So there's also that. So there is some injury concerns for the Buccaneers pass rush already. So we'll see how that impacts them. But that offensive line has got to be able to protect. No, I don't care who's playing or starting at left tackle, whether, whether it's Cornelius Lucas, Brandon Coleman, whoever it is, new guard, Nick Allegretti, you got to step up Tyler Biotish, Sam Cosby, Andrew Wiley, 
the more tested veterans on that line and starters on that line, you've got to step up and help protect your quarterback. But so too does the scheme. Quick passes, screens, use your running backs. You got Brian Robinson and Austin Eckler for a reason. Even Jeremy McNichols, uh, he was drafted by Tampa, not by this staff, not by this you know overall unit. I do think that Jason Light was actually a part of that group. But either way, Jeremy McNichols started his career in Tampa. He would love to get involved and love to have a, a, con a real contribution to a winning effort for the ball club. So use your scheme. And you know what? If you're getting pressure from the left side, move the pocket, man. You know, put some extra people over there, some tight ends, maybe an eligible offensive lineman as a tight end. We'll get into that in here in just a second. Chip block over there. Do whatever you got to do. But yeah, get Jaden Daniels away from that pressure or keep the pressure away from him. Those are the two ways the scheme can really help protect Jaden Daniels here in week one. And then, of course, Jaden, right? When you're rolling out there, don't hold on to the ball and take the hit unnecessarily to make the throw. Don't run downfield and take the hit to get the extra three feet or whatever it is. I know this is a game of inches. Isaiah Likely and the Baltimore Ravens learned that the hard way on Thursday night. I get it, but you've got to protect this quarterback, and that also starts with a quarterback protecting himself. So you want to see Jaden Daniels making smart moves and not lowering shoulders in the linebackers the way that Lamar Jackson was uh, to start the season. Key number two, you got to shake the bake. If you don't know, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and fans call Baker Mayfield bake or let him bake or let Mayfield bake, you know, those types of analogies. So we're going to do shake and bake. Right, that's my little lame attempt to kind of connect to it. But you got to shape, shake Baker Mayfield. You got to get him off his spot. Can't let him have all day uh, to throw against you. And honestly, the pass rush for this Washington Commanders defense can also help this secondary, which I think most of us agree or believe is the suspect part of this defense, uh, at least the most suspect part of this defense. So Deron Payne, Jonathan Allen, we haven't seen them in live game action this season. They did not play at all in the preseason. We didn't see Bobby Wagner out there. How are those three going to play off of each other? How are they going to impact guys like Frankie Louvu, Doran Armstrong Jr. trying to set the season off right? Jamin Davis getting his first real game uh, opportunity to show his stuff as an outside linebacker, defensive end, hybrid, you know, edge defender, uh, all that stuff. How is it all going to come together? The more Baker Mayfield has three and a half to four and a half seconds to throw, the harder it's going to be for that commander's secondary to keep the very talented weapons in Tampa Bay uh, under wraps. So they, th this pass rush is going to be incredibly important and need to get after Baker, make him uncomfortable, make him throw the ball before he wants to, or just take him off of his spot. So he's got to change the trajectory. That's going to be the defensive key. We're going three keys here. Special teams, make all of your kicks. This has to be priority. You know, Cade York has been brought in here for a reason. We talked to special teams coordinator, Larry Izzo on Friday to wrap up the week. And he talked about it as well. Cade has got a very strong leg, kicks a very straight ball. He's been very accurate in the preseason. We've chronicled that here on the show. Two, two for two from field goals, two for two for extra points uh, with the Cleveland Browns and with the Washington Commanders. And the reports coming out of practice have been good uh, as well. And you know what? Let's kind of throw in a little bit of a challenge for Larry Izzo and his special teams unit. Maybe you can even steal a kickoff return for a touchdown. If you're watching this new kickoff, procedure for the national football league i think you probably see what i see there is a potential here for teams if you can figure it out if you can get it blocked up or if you get a guy larry Izzo kind of mentioned like this new kickoff uh, policy or procedure guys are going to have to make people miss or be able to break a tackle if you break one tackle and you break it cleanly i mean i'm not talking like dude wraps you up and you kind of wiggle free eventually you know what i mean like by the time you do that the cavalry arrives and all that stuff but like if you can juke a guy out of his cleats if you can bowl through a guy or just go through an arm tackle, if you can make one guy miss cleanly in a kickoff return, I think that there is a potential here to get a touchdown return out of it. So if the Washington Commanders can make that happen, you get a score on special teams, that really tends to set things apart and really set a team on, uh, on a course towards gaining a victory. And the Washington Commanders are three-and-a-half-point underdogs on the road against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. My overall prediction is, I do have the Buccaneers winning 24 to 21. So technically, well, not technically, I've got the Washington Bears covering the spread. Again, spreads three and a half. So if you take the Commanders and three and a half points and lose by three, then you win that bet. I'm not guaranteeing it. I'm not telling you it's going to happen. I just, I do think that the Buccaneers probably are going to win. They've got a lot of offensive weapons. I think any team that has three legitimate wide receivers and Mike Evans is a future Hall of Famer. Chris Godwin is really good in his own right. Jalen McMillan, look, he's a rookie, so he is highly unproven. But what he's shown in the preseason, what he's shown in training camp, he looks really, really good. Uh, good enough to unseat a guy who's got, you know, a year of experience in the NFL on him uh, for that third wide receiver spot. And so I just think that they've got the speed, they've got the height, they've got the, the size, 
to match up against this commander secondary. And I'm just not sure that this pass rush is going to get home enough. Like I think they're going to get home a good amount of times, but I think the Buccaneers are going to have the opportunity against what I still look at as a somewhat suspect secondary. Uh, and, and they're going to be able to make this thing happen. I'll say right now, if the commanders win this game, I think we come back early next week talking about how this secondary really impressed me personally and, and, and maybe surprised a lot of people with how well. I'm not saying they'd be perfect or anything like that, but for how well they did against a very talented Buccaneers receiving core and aggressive quarterback in Baker Mayfield. So those are our keys to victory for the Washington Commanders this weekend and my official game prediction here for week one of the National Football League season, which means football is back. And also Brandon Coleman is back. He will make his NFL debut on Sunday. Cornelius Lucas will also play. And a lot of people have a problem with the idea that these left tackles are going to be rotating. I'm going to tell you why you shouldn't panic just yet. That coming up on today's episode of Locked On Commanders, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And I'm going to do that thanks to our friends over at LinkedIn. Today's episode of Locked On Commanders brought to you by LinkedIn. And when you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. That's why you need to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. But LinkedIn isn't just another job board. LinkedIn helps you hire professionals that you can't find anywhere else, even those who aren't actively searching for a new job, but may be open to the perfect role with your company. In a given month, over 70% of LinkedIn users don't visit a single other job site. So if you're not looking on LinkedIn, you're looking in the wrong place. On LinkedIn, 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. So hire professionals like professionals on LinkedIn. LinkedIn is also constantly finding ways to make the process easier for you because they know that small businesses don't always have the time or the resources to do hiring the right way. Two and a half million small businesses are using LinkedIn for hiring. So post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free terms and conditions apply. There's a little bit of panic on the streets of Washington, D.C. or the DMV or just Washington Commanders Fanville, if we want to call it that, uh, that there might be rotating left tackles this Sunday and that might be a little bit of a problem. But I'm here to tell you, to quote Aaron Rodgers, relax. I think it's going to be okay. I'm going to tell you why here in just a second. Thanks for making Locked On Commanders your first listen of the day. Every day, the new Locked On NFL is here. Locked On NFL is now two shows every single day. First up, the madman Tyler Rowland kicks off your morning with a double shot of NFL espresso, and then you can swing by the barbershop with Tony Wiggins for some real NFL talk. And if you swing by Tony Wiggins Barbershop on Wednesdays, you'll see me there uh, representing the Locked On NFL podcast. Add in the Locked On local experts, and you get unprecedented NFL insight, hot opinions, detailed breakdowns, all in 30 minutes. It's the new Locked On NFL, and it's twice per day. So let's look at this Washington Commanders injury report and talk about what Dan Quinn talked about regarding the injury report and why it's got some people very, very wrapped up, or I don't say wrapped up, ramped up, nervous, anxious, unsure, uh, a lot of adjectives going on there. So on the Washington commander side of things, Brandon Coleman, guard who's been dealing with a shoulder injury since training camp, right? It cost him all three preseason games. He's been a full participant all week long. He is a go, and Dan Quinn said he will play. We'll talk more about what Dan Quinn had to say. Here in just a moment, Cleveland Farrell, defensive end, dealing with a knee. Dante Fowler, linebacker, also dealing with the knee. Deron Payne, defensive tackle, has been dealing with a back injury, uh, back issue, I would say, not injury. Trent Scott, offensive tackle with a knee. He's good to go as well. Not good to go. Quarterback Marcus Mariota, chest injury. Um, Jerzon Newton, Johnny Newton, rookie defensive tackle, who's been dealing with a foot injury, not related to the two foot surgeries he's already had. He was limited on Wednesday, limited on Friday, which is exactly what Dan Quinn said he would be starting the week. Did not practice on Thursday, which Dan Quinn told us to start the week. He would not practice on Thursday. He is listed as doubtful. I do not personally think Johnny Newton is going to go. Looking at the Buccaneers side of things here, I'm not going to be as detailed with them because, quite honestly, I don't think you guys would really care. They've got a whole lot of guys who are on here that are no game designations, which means they're good to go. They're not going to miss any time. Uh, there's one guy out, Logan Hall, defensive lineman. He is out for the Washington for the Washington, for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. That's actually fairly significant, not because Logan Hall has been great by any means as a defensive end, but the fact that he hasn't been great yet, he's their starter, one of their star defensive ends, kind of, you know, I mean, now you've got that second guy in there, and that's going to impact that pass rush that we were just talking about, right? Questionable, uh, full participant all week, but questionable Trey Palmer, who's been dealing with a concussion. Now, he's got a clear 
concussion protocol. Again, full participant all week is pretty promising that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers will have their fourth receiver on the field. But here's the thing that's got Bucks people very concerned. Kalijah Cansey, second-year defensive lineman with a calf injury, just popped up on Friday, was limited in practice Friday. He is officially questionable. The advantage that the Buccaneers have is they don't have to travel, right? So Kalijah can spend the entire weekend in the ice tub, the hot tub, the elevated tub, the whatever they want to do tub uh, to do all this stuff and get him as ready to go as possible. But even if he is limited, that is a big, big loss, especially when you're talking about losing potentially two of your three starting defensive linemen on a very aggressive, very blitz heavy defensive line in Tampa. So both of those injuries, uh, you know, you don't want to wish injuries on people, but if neither of those guys, Kalaja Cancer or Logan Hall go, then, you know, that would be very advantageous to the Washington commanders. Now let's get to what everybody's really spun up about Brandon Coleman. So Brandon Coleman, uh, Dan Quinn was asked multiple questions about Brandon. I asked one uh, that I think is really kind of starting to stir up a lot of this conversation. First foremost, he was asked on tackle Brandon Coleman status. And Dan Quinn said, quote, did great last week and this week, end quote, pretty much left it at that. Well, uh, I couldn't just let that go. So I came back and I asked him on the probability of both offensive tackles, Brandon Coleman and Cornelius Lucas getting reps on Sunday. Here's the reason I asked that, because in the portion of practices open to the media this week, and, and basically it's mostly individuals, but offensive linemen, when they're doing individuals, a lot of times they line up in a five man front, right, which would be your starting front. It's been Cornelius Lucas as a left tackle. So while Brandon Coleman has been a full participant, he has not been with the starting unit in the portion that we've been able to see. And to me, even though you could have done something different in the portion we can't see, I don't think it makes a lot of sense to not have your starting left tackle in there if he's going to actually start. So I'm like, okay, I want to ask this question. Dan Quinn said, yes, very realistic. And yeah, we're planning on that. So the Washington Bears are planning on Cornelius Lucas and Brandon Coleman. To me, there's not a lot of strategic advantage to say, Brandon Coleman is is not going to start when he's not going to start or he's going to start when he's not going to start. Like, so to me, again, I just think Cornelius Lucas is going to start this game, but Brandon Coleman is going to get reps. So this is kind of sparked this conversation that Brandon Coleman and Cornelius Lucas are going to rotate at left tackle. But here's the thing. Dan Quinn never said the word rotate. Like Dan Quinn never said like, you know, he'll go in for one drive. He'll come in for one drive. He'll go in for two drives. He'll go in for two drives. So the, the, the whole rotating left tackles conversation is really just people connecting the dots. And I get why the dots are being connected, but let's, let's just be very clear here. Nobody from the Washington Commanders has said they're going to rotate left tackles. And at practice, again, in just the portion open in the media, I can't tell you about the rest of it, but at practice, it hasn't been rotating left tackles. So here's what I think is actually going to end up happening. I think one of three possibilities. Brandon Coleman or Cornelius Lucas is going to start this game. If Cornelius Lucas is just getting worked, I mean, just overrun and it's causing problems, then I think maybe you see the team say, okay, look, Brandon is healthy enough to play, but we don't want to push him in there too fast. Like, we don't want to risk a setback, so we're going to let Luke get the start. But if Luke is just getting beat the, beat the heck up, or let's say he gets injured, knock on wood, it doesn't happen, right? Then Brandon is you know capable of going out there. They're trying to be smart here, try not to rush the rookie on the field. So that's case number one on where Brandon plays. However, Dan Quinn said Brandon Coleman is going to play. So there is obviously a plan for him to play. What could that plan be that does not involve rotating left tackles? Well, plan number one, big sets. What do big sets oftentimes use? An extra lineman as an eligible receiver. Now, in this case, I actually think Brandon Coleman would come in and be the left tackle, and Cornelius Lucas would stay on the field as the eligible tight end, but then line up next to Brandon Coleman. And basically you've got Brandon Coleman who's coming back from a shoulder injury, but now he's not going one-on-one -on -one in his blocking assignment necessarily not having to protect the edge. Cornelius Lucas still protects the edge. Brandon Coleman is the interior left tackle. And then you've got Nick Allegretti next to him. Now I could be wrong there, right? Maybe Brandon Coleman does come in as the eligible and he lines up outside of Cornelius Lucas, certainly a possibility as well. That's just kind of the way that I envision it. Another way that you can basically ensure that Brandon Coleman is going to get reps without rotating left tackles is goal line. Again, goal line is, and I mean, you can basically say it's the same thing, big set goal line, right? But big set, you're typically talking about them being away from the goal line, goal line. You're talking about them being on the goal line. And again, you typically like to have extra linemen. So Brandon Coleman could potentially get in there. So I don't think that we should get completely spun out about, about the, about the fact that both these guys are going to get reps because I don't necessarily think it automatically means they're going to rotate at left tackle. Uh, so that, that's just my two cents. And again, no guarantees, no promises, nothing like that. But when I hear they're both going to get reps, 
there's more than one way. There's more than just rotating them to get both of these guys reps. Somebody who's not going to be getting reps on Sunday, unfortunately, I really feel bad for him. Wide receiver Byron Pringle. He was released Friday evening by the Washington Commanders. Why was he released? What does it mean is coming up next? I got an idea. I'm going to tell you what it is next on today's episode of Locked On Commanders, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And I'm going to do that today thanks to our friends over at Prize Picks. And Prize Picks is America's number one daily fantasy sports app with over 5 million active members. It's the easiest and the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. And unlike other apps on Prize Picks, it's just you against the numbers. All you do is you pick more or less on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. One Caleb Williams passing yard is going to get you a win on prize picks every week in September. That's right. Only one yard gets you an automatic win every football weekend in September. As long as Caleb Williams is active, that's for four weeks of wins. So don't miss that deal because when September ends, the deal is gone on prize picks. And you now went up to a hundred times your money on prize picks with as little as four correct picks, really fun app. So download the prize picks app and use the code locked on NFL to get $50 instantly. When you play $5, that's code locked on NFL on prize picks to get $50 instantly when you play $5. You don't even need to win to receive the $50 bonus. It's guaranteed. Prize picks run your game. (music) Wrapping up today's episode of Locked On Commanders, wrapping up the official week here at Locked On Commanders. We will have a bonus episode dropping on Saturday, so make sure you come through that. I interviewed Logan Paulson for the show, talking about the week one matchup, expectations for Jane Daniels, all that kind of good stuff. Don't have time to fit it into this episode because of everything going on around the team. So we're going to drop that interview in a bonus episode on Saturday. I'm either going to do it Friday night before I have to go to the airport uh, to go to Tampa, or I'm going to do it Saturday once I get to Tampa and drop it all, put it all together and drop it for you. We will see. But either way, at some point in time, Saturday, that episode will drop. One of the things happening that makes it so that we can't air the Logan Paulson interview today, Byron Pringle, wide receiver, being released shortly before I actually went to go record this episode. Um, And first of all, it stinks for Byron Pringle. I don't think it's something that Larry Izzo, special teams coordinator, uh, even saw coming because we just talked to him Friday afternoon about the punt returners, kick returners, all that stuff. And he talked about, you know, the potential of Jamison Crowder, who's obviously who he called a quote unquote professional uh, return specialist. And then Byron Pringle, who has a very high career average as a punt returner being an option. But, you know, Larry Izzo did say there were other players on the team that could potentially fill that role if necessary. So you'd see who he had available to him. And maybe he knew it was coming. Maybe he didn't know it was coming. If he knew, he didn't tip his hat, uh, tip his hand to us, which is exactly what he's supposed to do. Uh, but Byron Pringle released. So clearly he is not going to be in the return game. And it really stinks because Byron uh, just saw him in the locker room Friday, super hyped, super pumped up, uh, ready to go home. He's from Tampa, Florida. So this was his opportunity uh, you know, to go to Tampa, you know, probably see friends, see family play in front of them. So, yeah, man, I mean, that's the business part of this. It's rough, unfortunately, but really feel for Byron in the situation. Really hope that maybe there's a situation where they're able to bring him back at some point uh, in time. But what does it mean? Why did this happen? I got to give a uh, shout out to Steve Wino of the Associated Press because this is kind of an idea I had bouncing around my head as well. But I'm looking through Twitter and looking at reactions and he actually had the same reaction. So just because you know he's already said it, I definitely want to give him credit for also saying this, but I think it potentially means that Sam Hartman is about to get added to the active roster. Look, the Washington Commanders kept three quarterbacks for a reason, and yes, one of those reasons is Jeff Driscoll did really well in the preseason and did really well in training camp and proved that he was a valuable part of the team, but Marcus Mariota being out for this game means that you kept three quarterbacks, but you only have two. The emergency quarterback rule, the third emergency quarterback rule requires that your third emergency quarterback can be a game day inactive, but has to be a member of the active roster. They can't come off the practice squad. There was a proposal by the NFL ownership to allow the NFL PA to approve a rule that would allow the third emergency quarterback to come from the practice squad, which would mean you don't need to use an active roster spot on a third quarterback. Now, less than half of the NFL kept a third quarterback on their active roster, but the Washington commanders were one of them. And again, coach Quinn said it was absolutely Jeff Driscoll, you know, did it, da, da, da. But again, you look at the way this team has been handling injuries, especially with young players. If Jaden Daniels gets banged up at all, I don't believe the Washington Commanders are not going to have the same conservative approach with it. So if he gets banged up at all, I envision the Commanders basically sitting him down, shutting him down, saying, dude, look, your health is too important. We're not doing this. You're not going back out there. That leaves you with Jeff Driscoll. And if he gets hurt, knock on wood, none of this happens. 
But if he gets hurt, you're now basically, I mean, Luke McCaffrey, or you put Jaden Daniels back in there. And if you put Luke McCaffrey in there, you're going to have to answer a lot. I mean, you're going to have to answer some tough questions anyway, because you're going to get asked, how do you tell the rest of your roster to go out there and put it on the line when as soon as your quarterback gets a boo-boo, you shut him down? I think it's an understandable, reasonable prospect, right? But the questions are still going to come. So I think you put Sam Hartman on the active roster, and now he can be a game day inactive, and he can be your emergency quarterback. So if the worst-case scenario comes, Sam Hartman is there. I think that's what is about to happen here with the Washington Commanders. Now, what that frees them up to do is probably what they were planning on doing anyway. If Johnny Newton indeed does not play, which I predict he will not play on Sunday, and that is to activate defensive lineman Sheldon Day and Carlos Watkins off the practice squad. So they'll give you another defensive end slash defensive tackle tandem that the Washington Commanders can use for, for that pass rush because we heard from Joe Wood Jr. earlier this week he's going to try to rotate those dudes as much as possible, keep them as fresh, keep them as cooled off, keep them as, as healthy as possible uh, throughout the entirety of the game because it's going to be a hot one in Tampa, Florida. And Tampa's wearing the white on whites, which means at a minimum the Commanders are wearing burgundy jerseys. And the theory there is that sun is going to be beating through that burgundy jersey, getting warm, getting hot, causing those players to get even hotter. I don't know how big of an impact that really has, but that's the theory in Tampa. So I think that's what's going to end up happening. Sam Hartman's about to go on the active roster. Sheldon Day, Carlos Watkins about to go from practice squad to game day activations on Sunday. That means two players will have to be inactive from the active roster. I don't know who those guys are. Uh, obviously, we'll see who they are when we get to uh, about an hour and a half before kickoff on Sunday, uh, which would be about 3 o'clock in the afternoon Eastern time. So a lot going on with the Washington Commanders. Again, uh, make sure you come back tomorrow. Our interview with Logan Paulson will drop on Saturday. That's the next episode of Locked On Commanders. And then the next time we'll talk, we'll be live from Raymond James Stadium following the Washington Commanders Week 1 contest against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. In the meantime, if you got questions or comments, all you got to do is text me. All you got to do is become a Locked On Commanders insider. To do that, go to joinsubtext.com slash Locked On Commanders. Get in on that fun today. For your next listen, check out the Locked On NFL podcast, the Madman Tyler Rowland, and the Barbershop with Tony Wiggins. Get you some NFL talk all day long. It's the new Locked On NFL, and it's twice a day. As always, thank you for making Locked On Commanders your first listen of the day. Every day, every day, or thanks for coming through on a consistent basis like you do. And until we speak again, if you're out and about, please be safe, be kind, and I'll see you next time for another episode of Locked On Commanders, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.